competition, I mean, I'm just focusing on myself. I'm trying to just work on our timing with uh, Jake and Brian. And as of right now, I feel like I'm doing a good job. I just you know my whole goal is being able to perform and being able to have both coach and Dak and our team to depend on me. If they need me, I can come on the field and make the kicks I need to make. And, uh, yeah, that's my number one goal, just to be that guy that's de dependable whenever down the road, middle of a half, whenever it is. I just want to be able to be an asset to the team. Aaron, what are your thoughts on the structure of this training camp and that you have these joint practices with two other teams? Yep. I wonder if that's more opportunities because obviously it can't be controlled in a preseason game how many attempts you might get. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity for us to kind of just get ready for, for the games. I know the games are a, a perfect opportunity for guys to showcase themselves, but it gives them, other guys even more tape and more time and give the coaches more uh, time to tell them who they are and what they can do and against opponents is not the same guy so um, you know you see the same team and all throughout camp and then when you go to somewhere else you get a little bit more intensity and it's more game like so I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for us and uh, the rest of the team to show what we got and be prepared for Saturday in Denver I've seen some of your uh, visualization work yeah like after practice yeah nobody can you talk about when you started doing it and what you get out of it well I actually did my uh, master's in uh, like in I actually wrote like the first kicking book so if a high school coach were to pick up a book they can look at it technically this is what the kicker should be doing these are the drill they should be doing so I created that and then a uh, part of me is like I wanted to learn more about the mental because in this league it's like look at all the kickers around the NFL every one of them is going to be within like four or five yards you know Justin Tucker's going to be 66 some might be a 61 60 right but it's a matter of who's going to be able to put it between the ears and be focused on that so throughout my time I always wanted to learn more about my mental and uh, be able to control what I should be thinking about and uh, just over time I've uh, been able to study it and so I come out here at night time um, I do my visualization on the field but before practice I'll try to do it in, in our room and we've had it with both uh, like I've talked to with both our special team coaches where they give me a lot of time before practice so we have our meetings and we have a, a lot of time where I can go do my visualization in my room then I'll go get ready in the training room and be physically ready and I'll come out here and do my technical work and by then I've hit the field goal three or four times so when it comes to actually hitting it in practice I've already made it three or four times so it gives me the confidence I need so I think that's the biggest part for kickers and uh, be able to visualize these type of things. How, how long with the book? How long have you? It's just like a dissertation it was a part of my master's this was in like 2014 so but over time I've you know taking stuff that I learned from books taking stuff I learned from guys from around the league and just kind of made my own and um, you know just trying to be the best I can for my teammates to be honest that's what I have three I have an MBA and I have a master's in sports management that might be in finance and I have an undergrad in sports management okay. your, your father was a professor is that right? yeah my dad was a professor so it came what from did, him did he study or uh, he studied Ken he, he, he taught Ken and for him it was like I don't care how good you are at sports if you don't have your grades up you're not doing anything so that's always been like uh, school first and then sports second um, and that's kind of like pushed me and I've been able to kind of evolve that because you know football um, obviously that's my number one and throughout um, like when I came out of uh, college I didn't get drafted so I had to kind of set up a plan B in case it happened but now I'm just focused on plan A and have all those degrees set to the side so at least I'm good for whenever that time comes. Where'd you get all the degrees from? Um, I got two of them from you know, University of Western Ontario and one from Niagara University. I got my MBA in, the, in New York. Yeah. What do you want to do beyond your football? Play a, be a kicker as long as I can. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I haven't thought that long. I, I've just been like so focused on being able to play in the NFL and uh, like you know, like we we're talking about the visualization techniques, working with my coach. Like even yesterday, like he was calling me, sent me some videos. This is what you should be looking for. And just you know, just my number one focus is the team, being able to provide for them and be an asset to them. So whenever that time comes, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> so yeah. What's your mentality when you hear that that mojo moment music and and, and you know it's some point in time you yeah. go out there and get your shot. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. For when it comes to a mojo moment, it's just including like the situational, right? So I want to be able to be one of the best guys in the situational while it works, and we're getting a plenty of opportunity. So uh, when it comes to that, is you know, the routine is the same, mechanics are the same, and then just trying to make make sure I'm doing the same kick every time. Do you know what I mean? So when I'm going out there with Brian, making sure we find a good spot, we got to go snap and hold, and then I can do my job. Could you, can you speak to the 
it's an interesting dynamic in training camp yeah. because you and Jonathan or whomever you're competing yeah. against, you're teammates, but you're competing. So there's like that yeah. th between competition and cooperation, and especially when the other guy's a young guy and may yeah. need some help. Yeah, I mean, for me uh, right now, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm just worrying about what I can do and what I can control. Um, so whenever, like when we're working pre-practice or post-practice on snap, hold, kick, I'm just trying to make sure our operation is good. I know it's uh, it's a competition at the end of the day. Um, I really truly want this, so for me, I'm just trying to focus on myself and how I can make myself better so I can help my team be better. Have you noticed since you've started the visualization, and have you charted, has it made a difference? Or Absolutely. What percentage difference has it made? I, I think it, it, it makes a tremendous, uh, like, help to, for you to be prepared for it. Like, wherever you go, like, even if, on game day, I'm going out there before practice and doing a, a set of uh, visualization cues. But, you know, I... I think it's gotten to the point where there's so much uh, information out there. There's a lot of kickers doing that, and I think that's why a big part of why kickers are being so successful. And uh, you know, we have even that we have a, a coach, uh, Chad Boeing here. Like he'll, he's part of our mental strength coach. And so even last year when I was in and out of the team, some of the uh, stuff that he talked about, I took those with me. So everywhere I've been, I've been having the opportunity to learn from professionals and being able to implement it in my works. When you miss. How do you analyze a kick versus visual? Uh, let it bleed into the visual. There's, so there's seven different cues of why someone will miss. I won't go through them, but like you know, it can be technique, it can be mental, it can be someone distracted in your head, right? And it can be weather, it can be your team, right? If there's a bad snap or someone uh, there's missed assignment, mm -hmm. right? So um, and it can be some. And last one is technical, okay. uh, physical. Physical is like if you're tired. Okay. So like if in the end of a game and you've kicked off like eight times and you know that could play into a few so whenever you I miss something I'm really quick to diagnose which one of those seven rules are and then I can and go you on stay there so then you don't visualize it you're just focused yeah so I'll know so like the uh, when I miss one I'll be like okay I know what I did and this one I need to fix it so I've gotten so comfortable that that I can actually move on and forget about that one and be able to make it uh, make it count in the next one. How do you pronounce your name? High. So the H-A-J is just high. And then rule, like you got to follow this rule. So high rule, law, who? Like who are you, you know? So high rule, law, who? How many have you heard high rule? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, some of the guys call me hallelujah and some of the fans and stuff like that. I, don't, I know it's very difficult for people, so I, I you know, I enjoy it and uh, it's all fun, like for me. I know it's difficult for people. I don't good with a play-by-play -play announcer saying hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe hallelujah for Hirolahu, but... <laughs> is it okay with you if we just stick with Lyrum? Lyrum okay? is fine with me, okay. absolutely, yeah. Lyrum okay. is fine. All right. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.